Today, I've got a brand new resource to share with you that's going to help you quickly and correctly set up your color management for every project that you tackle. And that's gonna allow you to grade with more confidence, knowing that you've got all of your details, all of your drop downs, all of your menuing, everything that you need set up exactly right in your color management so that you can get the strongest possible color grade. We call this the color management cheat sheet, and I'm gonna walk you through each of the steps in this cheat sheet here in this video. So let's dive in, and we're gonna start by going into Resolve and mirroring the list of uh, items that we see described here in the color management cheat sheet. So I'm gonna go into Resolve, and I'm gonna go into my project settings and go to my color management, and we're gonna set our color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Next, I'm gonna turn my automatic color management off, and I'm gonna turn my color processing mode to custom. Now, what we're gonna do here is we are gonna go through all of the pieces that won't change per project. These are the pieces that are gonna be constant in all projects. And then we're gonna look at the one setting that we do need to alter based on the particular project that we are grading. So timeline color space, DaVinci wide gamut intermediate, that's always gonna be what we use. Timeline working luminance is gonna be custom 10,000. Why? Because I don't want to limit the dynamic range of my image when I'm grading it, I only want to limit the dynamic range of my image when I have to, which is when it's on its way out the door to my display. Up until that point, I want access to all of the scene linear image that uh, was captured in camera, all right? Next, output color space. I'm gonna set this to Rec 7 or 9 Gamma 2.4 because that is the standard that my reference monitor is calibrated to. If you happen to be grading on your laptop screen or on your computer monitor or something like that, you might wanna choose Rec 7 or 9 Gamma 2.2 instead. But for me, I'm going to say Rec 7 or 9 Gamma 2.4. Input DRT, I'm going to set to none for the same reason that I set my timeline working luminance to 10,000. My premise there is don't do anything. Don't tone map, don't compress, don't change anything about the dynamic range of my image in between camera and working space. We're going to save all of that for uh, the uh, journey in between working space and display space. All right. Now I'm going to set my output DRT to luminance mapping. That just happens to be my preference. You should feel free to experiment with these bottom four. Those are gonna get you the best results. Simple, I would generally discourage, but you're certainly uh, free to try that as well. Let's go with luminance mapping for now. And the last thing that I need to do is change my input color space. And I've saved this for last because this is the only thing of any of the settings that we've just gone through that actually needs to change and is going to vary depending on the project that you are grading. All these other things, these are gonna be the same in every single project that you tackle. So for this one, the input color space, this is going to depend on the color space of the material in my timeline. And in the case of this timeline, I have five shots that were shot in Area Log C3. And then I've got four other shots that are in some different formats. So what I'm gonna do as a result is I'm gonna select Area Log C3 because that's the color space that the majority of my images are in. So just because we're selecting one space here doesn't mean all of our images need to be in that space, but we do want to select the space that describes the majority of the images so that we don't have to go in and tag clips individually any more than is necessary. So with that in place, we've now got all of our project settings established. And once I hit save, we're gonna see the image that I'm currently on normalize, and we're gonna get a healthy level of contrast and saturation. So shots one through five, we're gonna go. We're ready to start grading, right? Let's talk about shots six through nine here. So shot six is an example of one where I need to change the color space depending on uh, the uh, camera that it was shot on, which was not an Arri Alexa. This was shot on a Sony camera in the S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine uh, color space. So I'm gonna right click on the thumbnail for this clip, go to input color space, and instead of project Arri Log C3, I'm gonna scroll down and find S gamut 3 Cine, S log 3, like so. And in this case, that actually made a pretty minor difference, but of course we want to get those details correct uh, because we never know what difference they will make and we want to be uh, in the strongest possible position at the outset of our color grade. So that's all I'm going to do there. Shot number seven. Here's one that is in Airy log C4. So I'm going to go to my input color space. And when we flip this, we're going to see a bigger difference. I'm going to select Airy log C4. And there we go. Now we've dealt with that single clip that is in a different color space than the majority of our images. And now I wanna go back to our cheat sheet and kind of get caught up on what we've covered so far. So we've covered all this, we've covered working with multiple cameras and sources. And what we now wanna talk about is working with unknown cameras and sources. 
This is honestly the biggest challenge in color management, in my opinion, when we are not sure what the color space of our camera is, because we really need to get that right. We need that information if we want to color manage effectively. So what do we do if we just don't know and we can't find out? We try to ask our production counterparts or a client and they can't tell us and we're just left with whatever we can figure out here with the footage inside of Resolve. Well, we've prepared this flow chart for you that will kind of walk you through or a decision tree maybe uh, better describes it. Uh, that's going to walk you through some possibilities and we're actually going to go through the branches of this tree right now. So we're going to start with is the image in some kind of log color space and let's look at uh, this uh, shot number eight here for our first example. The image is not in some kind of log color space in this case, is it? It's not low saturation. It's not low contrast. If anything, my problem is the opposite. I got too much color. I've got too much contrast, right? So let's go back to our decision tree and we're going to say, no, it's not. Well, things are pretty simple. Basically, what we're going to do is flip between these five options and find the best fit. It's not the most scientific, but it's the best we can do because what we're essentially concluding is well, it's not in a log space, so it's probably in some kind of display space. And the most common display spaces, the ones that are going to work in almost all cases, are going to be one of the five that are listed in the document. So I'm simply going to flip through these. We could say Rec 709 Scene. Okay, that looks decent. Gamma 22. Maybe that's got a little bit more reasonable level snap to it. Gamma 24. That's pretty similar. So far, Gamma 22 is my favorite. Next, we could look at sRGB. And by the way, you may not see a huge difference between these, but you, it's a good idea to audition all of them. sRGB is a good candidate as well. And we also have Rec. 709A as another option. And let's just scroll down here and take a look at that. So I'm going to say Rec. 709 Gamma 22 is the best fit. Honestly, these are all pretty close and they generally are going to be pretty close. But you go in, you find the one that best works for your image and you say, okay, that's my baseline. That's the best I'm able to do here. And I'm going to plan to grade this image to adjust, uh, make any further adjustments I need to, to get it level and balanced kind of at the beginning of the grade. Okay. So that would be kind of one branch of our decision tree. No, we are not in some kind of log color space. Next, let's look at this scenario and say, is we are in some kind of log color space. We can do that here with shot number nine. So with shot number nine, the first thing that I want to do, if I can uh, confirm that an image is in some kind of log space, which as we see, see here, we've got low contrast, low saturation, we're in some kind of log space with this. So what I'm going to do here is see if there's metadata in this file that can tell me the color space that I'm working in. So I'm going over to my edit page, going up to my metadata tab, and I'm going to take this upper right hand corner drop down menu and select all groups. And really, I'm just going to scroll through now and see if any of these fields contain any information about color space. This can pop up in different places but you will often see it appear uh, if we scroll up here in your gamma and color space notes, or it could uh, be even further up here in the earlier pieces of metadata. So if you can find something in here, that's great. Now we actually know what our color space is. And let's go back to our decision tree and see what happens if we can't find that. If we do, obviously we know what to do. We set our input to match what we found in the metadata. If we can't find anything, which is uh, the case here, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back over to our timeline. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to set my input color space to same as timeline. Okay. So effectively what this means is that I am treating this image like it is in DaVinci wide gamut intermediate, which is a big high volume log color space. So it's not the craziest choice for a log format. And I'm just going to kind of log in my mind. Okay. This shot is almost certainly going to need some love because it is not fully properly color managed, but I have got it into a reasonable starting point. And because I simply can't find the information that I would ideally have, I need to do my best and map things uh, to a level starting position. And I'm just going to plan to do any additional grading that I need to, to get my exposure, to get my contrast, to get my color balance, my saturation, all those pieces kind of feeling good once I actually begin working my way through this pass. So that's the nuts and bolts of the color management cheat sheet. And for the rest of the video today, I just want to walk through our things to remember down here. So a couple things. First, set your color management up first. Make sure that you don't start grading and then go in and do it because when you set your color management, that's going to change your grading context, right? So you want to make sure you do this right at the beginning of your process, even though it can be kind of a drag if you've got new images and you're excited to get in there and grade. 
Start with that color management. It's going to give you a better foundation. Next, sometimes we'll Resolve is going to ignore your project settings and it's actually going to automatically set your input color space for a particular clip or a group of clips to something other than what you uh, designated in your project settings. So that would mean that you go to a clip and you actually see before you even change the input color space that it's not here to start. So if you're getting an image that's looking really weird, even though you know that you've tagged the right input color space in your project settings, go in and make sure that Resolve isn't trying to help you out by tagging what it thinks is the input color space, even though that's not the input color space that you asked for. That's something that can definitely happen and uh, something that can drive you crazy if you don't know where to look to solve the problem, okay? Uh, lastly, this is another one that uh, used to drive me crazy. Camera raw formats, so that's R3D, B-RAW, Airy raw any kind of camera raw format it actually doesn't need you to set an input color space at all, and it will not let you set an input color space. So if I had a piece of R3D media in this timeline, and I were to right click on the thumbnail and look for this input color space, I wouldn't find it at all. And if we don't know why that's happening, and we're thinking we need to go in and change or confirm our input color space, that also can drive you sort of crazy. So just be aware, any raw format, you can't change its color space in terms of input. You don't need to change its color space in terms of input. And that's good because you don't even have the option to do it in Resolve. So if you go looking, then you're just going to get frustrated going, where in the heck is that input color space option? It is uh, disappeared in the case of those clips because it's not necessary. So I really hope that this PDF helps you guys out to just have a handy reference guide for where to flip all these settings. It sounds fairly obvious and straightforward when we walk through it here together as a group, but when you're getting these things set up at the beginning of a process, it's a lot of little details that you want to get right. So hopefully this cheat sheet is something that you can keep handy and consult if you're ever not able to remember where a particular setting should be, or if you just want to make sure, am I getting that right? Is that what Colin said to do? You can flip over easily to the color management cheat sheet and uh, check it out and confirm that you are getting everything set up for the strongest possible grade right from the outset of your process.